Artist Sandy McTeer is here and she is gonna blow your mind today. So Sandy, you have promised to show us how easy it is to take a flat painting and turn it into something dimensional. Yes. And I have to tell you, I don't totally agree that it's gonna be easy, but I'm willing to learn. Well, I'll show you how easy it is. So the first thing I did is I base coated the surface and I like to mix up my finishes. So I used an acrylic background and then I used a pearlescent color on top just to get that really nice shimmer and shine. You know, I like how you've used a bright color but it still has that vintage feel. Yes, absolutely. And then again, this is almost like tone on tone but the different finish. So the pattern, went ahead and transferred that on with transfer paper and then base coated all of my elements in with a, an acrylic paint just to get that base. And then we've ended up here. Now, this is my favorite part in a painting, that's to, to add shape, form, dimension using paint. And we're gonna and do you that. you are so good at it. We're gonna, thank you, we're gonna do that with lights and darks. So I'm just gonna kind of uh, scumble or stutter some of this brown paint on, and I want you to kind of move that around with your fingers. We're just going to weight the bottom of this pumpkin down with a little bit of paint. And I love the coverage of this acrylic, but I can also use it almost like a wash just like I'm doing there. A little bit in the centers. I can see how you're using here. your finger as oh, almost an auxiliary brush tool or well, something. And that takes the perfection part out of it. I don't want anything perfect. I want you just to put the paint on, move it around with your finger. And pumpkins are chunky and sometimes messy. And I like just to have that a little bit of shading right in there. So we'll get that dimension with the dark, but then one of my favorite parts is adding those highlights. So with the stencil brush, I'm just gonna mix a little yellow and white. This is key. You wanna wipe almost all of it off. I noticed that you're really blending your colors together and you're trying to make so that you don't have maybe any hard lines. Absolutely. And when I'm blending my colors, I don't like to blend it down to one color. I like to have almost like a little brush mix. So you see a little yellow, you wow. see a little white. And so you just continue in those sections. I that love you... that you're using a stencil brush without a stencil. That's yeah. not a way that I've ever yes. thought about using it just as a regular brush. What a cool idea. It adds so much texture. And then again, you saw me with my fingers there. If you get a little too much, you just go right over it. Add now, a little bit more highlight. Now, are you using opaque acrylic paints? Are you using translucent? I'm Does use it matter? Well, I'm using opaque. Yellows are pretty transparent, but since I added the white to it, you're going to get more of an opaque look. But once we have that, you're going to end up with that. Oh my gosh, the stem on that is amazing. So just like I did with the stencil brush, I took a smaller brush and I dry brushed in a little brown, little white, little green, little white, and it made that stem pop and come alive. But this weights the pumpkin, this separates the sections of the pumpkin, and then those highlights. And then what I did after this, just to kind of soften the look, was I took the original orange and I did a wash of paint right over it. So that just tones oh, wow. it down. So what's a wash for people who don't know? Okay, a wash is you have more water in your brush, then paint. So if I go to wash this on, look how that just makes that shine. Oh wow. And you know, I noticed even on the side of that where the leaf is, it looks like you've painted over the leaf. I that did. makes me nervous. Okay. Well, don't let it make you nervous because it is in the way. A pattern is there to guide you. I can still see the shape and that's why I base coated those in before I went ahead and did the colors on the pumpkin. So then you get to are leaves that have been base coated in, and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to add color to those. I was gonna say, you have one leaf on there that looks like it doesn't look like the rest. One of these things is not, not like, like the, the others. others. Right, so these are done and have all the highlighting on them. So uh, this is another technique I like to use, wet on wet. So I'm gonna go ahead, even though I base coated it, I'm gonna go ahead and base coat it again. So I typically will work on one leaf at a time so that my paint stays wet. Because obviously the paint's gonna dry and acrylic paint tends to dry pretty quickly. It does. So I'm working fast and I didn't wash that brush out. I added a little yellow, little white. So now I have a little yellow, little white, little green. Now it really is this simple. With the edge of that brush on the edge of that leaf, I'm going to pull in almost like I'm flicking the brush and I'm gonna flick in those highlights. That is so Cool, and I see, so let's talk a little bit about wet on wet versus dry, okay. because I can see it sort of happening, but would you just tell us a little bit about why it looks so different? Yes, because the colors are actually blending. So you mentioned that acrylics tend to dry faster, and so since it's wet, I'm pulling that wet paint into the wet paint. But if you, if you had um, seen how little of the paint I had on there, I had very little, so it feathers through. 
I don't have a lot of paint on my brush when I do this. And so, and notice how I'm flicking it. I'm not really like pushing and pulling with a lot of pressure. So that's just gonna let those bristles and that paint so feather pretty. right through. I'm gonna use that same highlighted color and I'm just going to paint in my little veins. And I'm using the chisel edge of the brush. You could use a liner brush. I'm sometimes a little bit of a lazy painter. I use the brush I have in my hand. That's always the best tool that you have. Yes. And then with the little um, tendrils here, I base coated those in with the same color that I did the leaves. And then again, just highlighted those very haphazardly, just kind of here and there. So lovely. But I know that you said that there's actually two more steps to finish this yes. masterpiece off. Yes. So I love this technique of framing in your piece. So I'm using a wipe. Just like a baby wipe, like a Just wet wipe. Just a baby wipe. And I'm running my finger across this really pretty brown color. And I have my hand on the inside of the surface, which is key so that it doesn't leave a harsh line. And I'm going to go around the beautiful shape of this surface. And you can move the baby wipe as it starts to... Um, you know, the wood will grab it a little bit, but look how that just frames it in on the finished piece. That is gorgeous. Draws your eye right to that pumpkin and right to that design. And it really helps with that vintage feel. Yes, yes. You know, right. which is really cool. But I know that there's even one more thing that you are gonna do to make this really fantastic. And it's gonna make it pop. I absolutely love glitter. Me too. And glitter paint makes it even better because it's not free flowing and flying everywhere. <laughs> so on some of the leaves, I went ahead and I used this holographic green glitter and I'm generously just gonna brush that right onto the leaf. So for people who aren't familiar with holographic, that basically means what? So the flake inside that glitter is going to um, shift and change depending on how the light hits it. So I'm using green first, and I'm not gonna let it dry, I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of um, an aqua teal color to kind of go with that background as well. So again, like you've been mixing colors everywhere, you're mixing your glitter colors too, and that really helps everything to blend. When I look at the finished piece, I can see how well the glitter works to really give a little something extra to the pumpkin. And I love this example you've brought with the fish because that underwater feeling is yes. really present in the way that the glitter you know, makes that fish almost appear to be glistening the way that real fish do. It's really the combination of like opaque things, washes, glitter, all those different kinds of paint are really creating something more. I mean, this is layers on layers on layers. You really are a master of working the layers and knowing which paint to use when. Well, at the end of the day, it's just paint and it's supposed to be fun and I love to layer it on and just play. This is so awesome, Sandy. Thank you so much.